Dennis and Steve made the three-day drive with the bikes to the Denver airport, where the rest of us arrived, finding the bikes unloaded and ready to ride. The first day's goal was to get to the mountains as quickly as possible, which meant I-70 out of Denver, which was one way to get the adrenaline flowing, with seven bikes, a little rain, and a full five lanes of traffic. The highlight of the day was climbing to 11,000 feet, but with the colder temps at higher elevation and damp gear, staying warm wasn't easy. We finally arrived at the campground, only to find the road closed, leaving us to scramble to figure out a plan. Getting low on daylight and fuel, just pulling to the side of the road wasn't ruled out. With the continuing rain, we slabbed it to the town of Buena Vista, where luckily the local Super 8 had vacancy. As the rain set in, we enjoyed the comforts of dry clothes and heat. The morning of the second day began with the journey through the Midland Tunnels and then a ride into our first taste of sand. While not on camera, I had the first wreck of the week hitting the side of the trail that deteriorated into a sand pit. One of the softest wrecks I have ever had, getting unstuck was a challenge. After getting turned around a few times, we found the trail leading to Lake City. Flat dirt roads and wide open country provided good high speeds to cover some distance. The day provided plenty of practice putting on rain gear and taking it back off. The temps can go from 80 degrees to a cold and damp 50 in a matter of minutes.
the day ended, we hit a break in between rain and decided to set camp in the wilderness. We had went hours without seeing a vehicle, and with the road in sight, no vehicles passed all night. Day three began with some stretching, preparing for our 120 mile trek. Low on fuel and miles from town, we would experience almost half of our bikes running out of fuel and using our emergency containers. Arriving in Lake City was a welcome sight, and after refueling both our bikes and bodies, we headed out for Cinnamon Pass. The road forward was unlike anything most of us had ever rode. Being precise with throttle control and focusing hard on your line was a must with the 500 foot drop off just feet away. Oh, yeah, man. While ascending the mountain, we encountered more rain, even hail at the top, but luckily it was short-lived. The summit lived up to the hype and provided the most amazing views in all directions. After some pictures and a quick break, we headed towards our next summit, California Pass. The trail of California was rough, and with Matt's bike not liking the elevation, lots of walking and pushing the bike was needed. Exhausted, all seven bikes made it to the summit. The sights from California gave the illusion of being in a foreign country or alien planet with no trees and rocks for miles.
What we got going on here? Taking a nap. Man. I was going to say, two bikes down in 100 yards. Nap time. Nap time. Matt and I both having slight altitude sickness, the break was short-lived so we could drop to lower elevation. The trail there led us through an old abandoned mining town, giving an opportunity to imagine life in the 1800s gold rush. Not realizing the mining town was not that much lower in elevation, dizziness and a headache were setting in fast. We left for the last peak of the day, Corkscrew Pass. As we drew closer, the road forked and the best route off the mountain was unclear. One thing that was clear was some of us needed to get to lower elevation and fast. Steve volunteered to ride ahead with me. Blitzing down the mountain provided something to concentrate on and take the mind off the altitude sickness. Every switchback felt like it provided more oxygen and halfway down I felt a lot better. Once the group rejoined, we hit hardtop for what would be the best view I had ever seen in my life. Million dollar highway descends into the town of Ori, winding through a landscape better than anything you can imagine. It was perfect ride to close out the day on our way to the campground. After some hot showers and much needed rest, we got prepared for day four. Day four included the most talked about trail leading up to the trip. Ophir Pass was not to be taken lightly. Watching many videos had us all worried about the steep drop-offs, rock slides, and minimal traction the backside of the pass included. The ride to the summit went fast and some of us had started down the backside before we even realized where we were. Carefully, we first geared the bikes down, staying to the inside of the mountain, keeping constant pressure on the front brake. Talking at the cabin we rented that night, we realized the road ahead seemed unclear. At the southwest corner of the state, our options were to backtrack some of the ride with some alternate routes or explore without adequate mapping more of the Colorado backcountry. Our ride to this point had gone well and we had covered more ground than expected. As we talked, the mention of one word silenced the room. Moab. Only being two hours away, it was a definite possibility. Day 5. The two hours of pavement pounding across the desert seemed bearable knowing the destination. Our plan was to intercept the Utah backcountry discovery route to save on some paved riding and follow it to Moab. As soon as we left the hardtop, we were met with sand in a terrain that was hard to read. 
Like riding on flat tires, we powered out until Denny's DRZ tried to wall in the sand. Stopping the fall would be a costly one. Strained ligaments and a fractured tibula was the first bite of Utah. It would not be the last. After limping back to the road, we headed straight for Moab. Arriving in the afternoon, we checked into a local motel. Moab. On day six, Denny decided to rest the knee and basically rebuild his motorcycle. Having carburetor issues, it took a while to figure out and after many attempts, he finally got it straight. The rest of the group rode out to the LaSalle mountain range. While riding out of the desert, the temperature quickly dropped with every thousand feet of elevation we climbed. The views from the top of the mountain were great looking over the red canyons of Moab. Within 70 miles, we went from desert to green mountains and back to the desert. The day provided an easy pace and a good day to rest for the next. The seventh day. It would be by far the most eventful of the trip. Four of us got an early start with Ray and Dennis hitting Arches National Park at sunrise and Adam and I tackling the Slick Rock Trail. Here we are at Slick Rock, Utah in Moab. Where I hurry is bicycle. That would have been pretty nasty. Alright. Do we want to do the practice loop or just just 
，这样干我大嫂。Thinking your tires are gonna slide down the mountain. <laughs> I know, but they have so much track. Saddled up, we began our journey through the Red Desert. Following the Utah BDR, we looped through the LaSalle mountain range, dropping into a canyon road. Driving back on hardtop, we rode up Route 128 through a barren land with no signs of life for miles. The quickest way back into Denver was by Interstate I-70. Our small bikes did not like the 75 mile per hour speed, but we were covering some ground. With only 10 miles left on fuel, low on water, and exhausted from the heat, we were one exit from everything we needed when Adam took the ride of his life. At 75 miles per hour, his back tire locked up and put him into a full skid. Swapping back and forth, the mighty XT stayed upright and made it to the shoulder. Upon inspection, two spokes broke loose, dropped into the tire, punctured the tube and blew out the tire. A fresh tube, bubble gum, and electrical tape had him back up and going in no time.
Day 8. The day consisted of easy roads winding back and forth above the Colorado River. It was a much needed break cruising nice dirt roads and even gave the opportunity to race along a herd of longhorn sheep. Getting some lunch in the town of Kremlin would be the last of the trail, with the only way back to Denver being lots of pavement. Our journey had came to an end as we made our way back to the truck. We reminisced of the great adventure we had experienced. The trip had went better than anyone's expectations. We had covered 1,200 miles, with 700 of that being trail, and the rest a mixture of dirt and paved. Our bodies and bikes had for the most part weathered the storm. It was an amazing experience and none of us will ever forget the adventure. Slick Rock, taking a break.